Hi, it's Chris and thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to be releasing this video. It's a collaboration between myself and the wonderful UK artist Julie Thatcher. The theme is In the Bleak Midwinter and it's based on the poem by Christina Rossetti. We both love creating landscapes and it's been a real joy working with Julie again. This painting is about one of those bleak winter days. It's going to be portraits, so this is going to be the sky part and this is the land. Now the sky is going to be quite muted colours. I've mixed up a lot of um, custom colours, but they're all quite low contrast and muted. However, there is going to be a sun, but it's going to be a hidden sun. It's going to be clouding um, on top of it, but it's going to be there. It's going to be low in the sky and it's going to create a, um, some bits of yellow in the clouds but the main colours are going to be greys. The sky is going to be a series of flip cups which are going to flip all at once and then when I've done the sky I'm going to do the land. The land's going to be a swipe so I'm going to put um, a white base down and then do various swipes to build up the um, land but it's going to be very um, soft, not, not too strong. There may be a couple of strong lines but it's all meant to be quite muted and soft a winter's day but not bright sunlight i'm using a relatively muted color palette for this painting so these are some of the colors i've mixed up this is naples yellow you can see it's really bright so i've just really knocked this down with some white and it's a very pale yellow i'm using a neutral grey, which is, looks quite light. I've also got a lighter version of this, and that's just mixed with white as well. Now this is the Amsterdam blue-grey. It's a very strong colour. So I've done a mid-toned version of this, you can see here, and then an even lighter version. I'm keeping them, trying to keep them in this order, so they're difficult to see, especially those two, to, to, to distinguish between. So hopefully I'll grab the right colours. Of course I'm using white as well. I then started layering my colours into the cups. When I wanted to see more of a colour, I had a thicker layer. And if it was only a small amount of the colour that I wanted to see, I would do a skinny layer. I was adding the paint gently, but if I wanted the paint to merge a bit, I gave it a slight swirl. Alice Bludge, always the last one. Good, 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 good luck, guys. Now, this paint in these two had, has got a long way to travel, so I'm going to let them gonna sit for a bit. Right. I shouldn't be putting um, lines in it, but I can't help myself. Brilliant white. And it's got a bit of yellow in there. Can you see it's so subtle though? This is going to be stronger yellow. But still not amazingly strong. Whoa, big air bubbles. Lovely. one. So this one's flown off the edge so I'm just gonna use that paint to do the sides and I'll work my way all the way around. You see it's quite bubbly so I am going to actually torch this one in particular is very bubbly. I'm not going to tilt that way first. I'm going to tilt this way. And a straight lift, nice and slowly.
didn't like the cells in this white section so I just swiped them over. I've just run a couple of grey lines through this yellow section just to break it up because it's meant to be clouds. It's looking truly beautiful. I love it. It's really soft. The contrast between the colours is really light. It's just like a winter sky. So this is dipping too low. This needs to come off a bit. So I'm just going to shove the paint around a bit. It's going to be covered over with white anyway, so that's fine. But it needs to not be as extreme. Right, you can see I've really changed this um, yellow section. It was too um, straight, um, too much of a band of yellow. There's meant to be a, a sun behind here and it wouldn't, wouldn't have been this strip. So I've just toned it down a bit. So I'm just going to let it dry a bit and then I'll do the um, swipe part. Right, I'm going to start building the bottom part of this. I'm going to put a line of grey, but I've also got a darker grey line here as well. So I'm just going to work with what I get. I'm just going to pour this um, the hills straight on. I then add my white paint, which is going to be the base for when I swipe. really filthy piece of plastic that I do my swiping with and that here I'm just creating the top of the hills so I'm doing a very gentle swipe. I'm happy with the swipe that I've done for the top of the hills and now I'm going to start building the rest of the landscape part. You can see I'm using quite bright colours and the muted colours. I'm swiping areas and using various implements to make tools and I'm just building up texture. Okay, so this is as much as I can do with, while the paint is wet. I've, uh, you can see I've added some rough details. The rest of it is going to be add, added on when it's dry. But I wanted the hill top to be roughly indistinguishable from the sky. But there is a line, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful at the moment. Depending on how it dries, I may 
lighten it or darken it. But I just, I wanted something really kind of almost ethereal. And this is a good starting point. I've just changed it again. I'm going to have to walk away and leave it now. I'm just going to take a sneaky peek at what Julie's doing for her painting. Now, if you're not familiar with Julie's work, she does some beautiful landscapes, really stylish, uses her paint quite fluid, uses swipes, flip cups, and also a lot of um, enhancements. After the pores are dried, she'll add trees and various details. It's really beautiful work, so do check out her video for this collaboration. I'll put it linked in the description so you can find it really easily. Julie's final painting is really beautiful and stylish. Okay, so the painting is dried. I got carried away with this bottom bit. And I shouldn't have put all this bit here, so I'm going to knock this section back a bit. Now, I said I wanted didn't want that much different definition between the sky and the top of the hills. But I reckon I need to kind of lighten the hills a bit so there will be some definition. So I'm going to work on the land part a bit, put in some more white in here and some lighter colours at the top of the hills just to bring some definition in. Break up a little bit of this blue, it's a bit dark. These kind of things you do in stages. When you change something, it affects the whole painting. So I'm going to do the top of the hill first, see how that looks, and then move on to this part. The sky I'm really happy with. Now, I was planning on putting a hidden sun in here. And what I mean by that is a sun that's kind of um, behind the clouds. And sometimes you just see the round disk of the sun behind the, hit, um, the clouds. But I might leave it as it is. I think what I'll do is I'll work on the land part first and then see how it sits with the sky. Because I'm really happy with the, the sky. It's whether I was going to add that hidden sun or not. I've taken some of that colour out here. It's still faded underneath. So I need that there. But it's taken that heavy colour out. Started putting definition into the hills. I'm going to work some more on, on that. I'm just showing you the stages. See, I've whitened this down. There is actually colour there. It's not coming out very well. So I've whitened this down and I've started to put some details in the hills here. And I'm going to carry on building that up. I want to put a couple of horizontals here. I've stopped adding to this painting. It's one of those ones which I could keep on going and then I would just totally finish it off. You can see some of the horizontal lines I've put in and this is just to break up some of those bands of colours. Overall, I'm really pleased with it. The sky is really beautiful, the land part is lovely and everything's holding together really nicely. I decided not to add the hidden sun. It is there, it's behind the clouds, and where it is there is a bit of yellow, but I didn't do the circle, the disc. I just felt the painting didn't need it. Here's King's modelling the painting for me because it was too big for me to tilt and film at the same time, but you can see it's just really softly beautiful. You'll be amazed when you compare Julie's painting with my painting because we've both followed the same theme, but our paintings are widely different. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the painting as much as I do. It's been great fun working on this collaboration. Do take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.